Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insight into the worlds of literature, both for those who do read and those who don't. First of all, Happy New Year. I hope this year can bring to all of us something much better than the last and I wish you all much joy in your future endeavours. The book I'm reviewing today is another work that can certainly be included on the classic shelf. It comes from an author who debatably holds the title for one of the most well-known and influential books of the 20th century, that being 1984. Today we return to George Orwell in a little book known as Animal Farm. <laughs> Animal Farm was published back in 1944, although it went through much deliberation before it ever saw print. Despite appearing as a fairy story, the title even once including those very words, Animal Farm is a sneaky little book that hides a far deeper meaning beyond the notion of just talking farmyard animals. It is for this reason the book ran into some difficulty when attempting to find a publisher. Animal Farm speaks very cleverly about the detrimental rise of socio-economic systems, particularly that of communism and of alliances that form thereafter. In this case, the pigs of the tale represent the communists in Russia. The farmers of the tale represent a range of countries. The most important to note is the owner of the farm in this tale, Mr. Jones, who represents the last czar or king of Russia. He represents things as they were. So with this in mind, let's take a dive into the tale. As this book is very short, I will be discussing key plot points, so should you be unaware and wanting to read this book yourself, I must warn you that the path ahead will be laden with spoilers, but only with good intention. Animal Farm starts as a tale about a group of farmyard animals who are tired of the subjectification they face at the hands of their owner and farmer, a man named Mr. Jones. An older boar named Old Major gathers the animals in the farmyard barn and tells them of a dream he's had. He speaks of better days where the animals have their own freedom to do as they wish and sustain themselves via their own means, where they will not be exploited by man, will not be slaughtered for meat or old age, and will be able to live longer and happier lives. He talks of a revolution in the future where animals will finally be free from the malice of man. As he speaks, his words are met to much approval by the other animals. Old Major passes in the days that follow, but his beliefs are held firmly in the animal's mind, and his ideas prove very powerful. The animals in the barn range in their intelligence, with the pigs being the most intelligent by far. Other animals are easily convinced and easily led, particularly by the passionate and articulate speakers as like the pigs. Eventually a turning point arises and the animals revolt against the farmer, Mr. Jones, and take control of the farm for themselves. They wish to live by the inspirational words of Old Major and attempt to create a fair and equal society. This is the basic premise behind the book. At this point we have a collective group who are sick of being repressed and so decide to revolt and create a better society based on the beliefs and ideas of a wiser figure who appears to have the answers. This is a noble goal, however its implementation is anything but fair. Orwell here is mirroring the Russian Revolution and the rise of communism. The animals, at least those who can read and write, those who are educated, in this case the pigs, construct a list of rules they wish for their future society to live by. These two appear somewhat fair and agreed upon by all the animals. They are as follows. Whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend. No animal shall wear clothes. No animal shall sleep in a bed. No animal shall drink alcohol. No animal shall kill any other animal. All animals are equal. As the book goes on, these rules mysteriously change and anyone questioning them is told that they were always as they appear. This is an important lesson to note, simply stating an idea or a law is not enough both for societal or moral purpose. It is one thing to have an idea but something entirely different to implement it. The animals dream of a better society, of a better way of living, and they set forth rules to make sure they do not become anything like the humans they have overthrown. Life at first seems better, 
But then things slowly change. The pigs get more rations than others, and the reason for this is shoddy and unfair. Nonetheless, it is accepted. The animals work long and hard days for little reward. The pigs are deemed the most apt leaders and thus need more. Eventually a pig called Napoleon is not so much put in charge but rather takes the position after a violent dispute with another pig called Snowball. Napoleon is followed by a pack of vicious dogs. No one dares speak back to him. Information is miscued to fit the chosen narrative of the time and slowly rules seem to change. History seems to change, but of course, no one wants things to go back to how they were. As time passes, no one even knows how bad or good things were long ago. They are continually misinformed and made to believe that life is all the better with their comrade Napoleon in control. A control that is becoming more one-sided as time passes. The pigs begin liaising with the humans they swore they would never contact. They broker deals, they become enemies, they become friends again. Now upon the rules, painted in white are the words, all animals are equal. But some animals are more equal than others. And thus perhaps the real truth is found. The pigs deem themselves more equal than others, and thus all animals are not equal. This statement in itself is a contradiction, but it enables the pigs more rights than their peers. The humans are invited round and a peace is brought about between the two groups. They are seen as two the same. The oppressed has become the oppressor. And so the tale ends. Now I'd like to draw back to the start of the video. Orwell faced difficulty publishing this work because of the way it parodied political regimes and systems of oppression, particularly that of Russia, who at the time were seen as allies to both Britain and America. Orwell's book was eventually published and has since become a massively influential work that has held particular strength to people in regimes that are corrupt and harsh upon their own citizens. The brilliance of this book is just how simple it is. It is a tale for a greater good that ends in disaster, or at least by the reader's eye. The animals are convinced what they are doing is for the better, but the outside observer can see it's all a sham. This is particularly worrisome considering this book is a mirror of power states past. Regimes like this have happened across the world and unfortunately may happen again. Orwell brilliantly creates an easy to understand tale that is somewhat upsetting. Notably when comparing the start to the end, you want the animals to live better lives and you see them attempt this in revolt. You almost feel happy they are free, but this freedom changes and a much darker power arises. Soon it is too late to question anything and the honest goals set out at the start of the book are never realised and more importantly, long forgotten. Instead, corruption is laid bare, if only for the reader, and the animals go on to live a life that is paradoxically worse than the one they had left. My friends, this is a powerful little book that I feel is a necessary read for anyone. It is short, it is to the point, and it speaks so effortlessly about how noble goals can go so wayward and wrong. I have left out little details for you to discover when reading, so please don't think you've heard every twist of the tale. But if you'd like to understand exactly how corruption can lead to mass death, atrocity and starvation, or indeed how power states that you may scoff at the idea of existing ever again in modern times can come to be, please pick this up. I was thoroughly impressed with the simplicity of this book and how despite its length it is still able to portray a powerful message. On these grounds I can start this year's batch of reviews with great applause. I would put this little book up there with the best in fiction and as such I would score it a 95 out of 100, an essential read for anyone. Please do check this out. Before we end, I'd like to add a final mention. A great inspiration of mine, the late Christopher Hitchens, spoke of this book's revival for another purpose beyond that of politics. And before I finish, I'd like to draw a parallel between the final rule I've mentioned previous and get you to think on it, maybe in the same way I have, because it's certainly something that deserves your time. Humanity is ever-changing, and so is the way we treat other animals. With further advancements in science, we are finding ourselves more similar to animals every day. 
It may be hypocritical for me to say this, but that last rule, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others, that could very much be used in the same light to describe how man treats animals. I think Hitchens is correct in his thinking, and I do believe in years, in decades to come, people will look back on this book and on that statement, and will see how backward things once were. I may be wrong, but I feel a change is coming in the way we perceive ourselves in relation to the animals we share this planet with for which we as man and some select other species receive an unfair privilege. My friends, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.